Hey guys, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. This is Danish. I'm in the United States and I am with the two of our close friends and professionals from Spain, Max and Laura. And um, they are sitting in uh, Barcelona, I assume? Correct. Yeah, it's one of my favorite cities. I went there. I still remember La Rambla, uh, La Rambla Street. But Spain, what a, such a great country. And a lot of us digital nomads love Spain and especially European nomads. That's where they go in the winters. So guys, all of you who joined this webinar, we will be starting in one minute uh, because other people are joining it right now. But I really want to show my gratitude and thank you that you took out your time and joined this great webinar. And of course, the biggest thank you goes to Laura and Max. They are... Uh, uh, let me introduce them. They Both of them work for Lexity. It's a very young uh, immigration firm out of Barcelona. And they also have offices in Lisbon and in Madrid, I guess, because I've, be, I've been to your Madrid office. Um, they are focused. They are young, as you can see them, young and beautiful. And they are focused on helping uh, digital nomads generally young digital nomads to move to Spain under different visa scheme, schemes. So they are a the immigration lawyers registered in the bar, bar or Barcelona bar, and uh, they would help you today to share whatever available visa options are uh, available for you guys or for your families who wants to relocate. And they will also share how to apply. And at the end, they will, of course, surprise you with some offer for you if you if you buy or if you uh, hire the, them so there will be an, a discount for you guys please check out VisaDB for the free database i we created for you around the world and of course your digital nomad nation portal which we created for you as well now without further ado i would allow laura and max professional the best people to share their screen and uh, enlighten us with all the visa options available for Spain. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much uh, for being here. Uh, I understand that uh, you are uh, listening to us. Um, and well, uh, what I just wanted to check that uh, that you can see uh, that you can see our our screen. Uh, if you can confirm that, uh, Danish. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Great. So, uh, yeah. Well, nice to meet you, and uh, thank you very much, Danish, for this opportunity to share uh, our knowledge. Uh, as Danish mentioned, uh, we are a, a young law firm and digitally focused. And yeah, our aim is to be able to help our clients, foreign clients, to, to be able to relocate to Spain and also uh, to cover all their needs uh, during the relocation. Because, of course, uh, any foreign who wants to, to reside in Spain or work in Spain will have other needs, not only the, per, the residence permit applications, but also... Um, uh, tax needs, so we have a tax department that uh, is able to help you, and also uh, the corporate department, the labor department, uh, the litigation department, and the real estate department, so that we can provide this uh, 360 grade uh, service and, and cover all, all our clients' needs during their relocations. Um, well, now, uh, as uh, Danish mentioned, uh, we have a great community in the world uh, who is uh, formed by these digital nomads that um, needs to um, that wants to uh, relocate to Spain and be able to reside in Spain while they are um, working remotely from here. Uh, and we have news uh, in this regard. Uh, I am here with uh, my colleague Maximiliano, also from the immigration department. And uh, we are going to explain you uh, this uh, news that uh, we hope that will um, be regulated. Well, this is a new residence permit that we hope that will be regulated soon. 
And, uh, and yeah, of course, I will let uh, my colleague uh, Maximiliano explain about uh, this Good. new residence permit. Good. Thank you, Laura. So, uh, yes, Spain has always been a very attractive destination, not only uh, with, because, of course, our privileged location, climate, uh, international community, but also, uh, well, business-wise, right? So uh, the main issue up until today uh, was that um, lately, during the last years, of course, the figure of the digital nomad has emerged. We are talking about people that can work uh, location independently. Uh, they only need a computer or electronic means, and they can basically work anywhere in the world. Sometimes they're employed, sometimes they're freelancers, but they have this freedom. And the problem uh, was that for many, many years, Spain did not have a permit that could suit their needs. As Laura will explain later, the permits that we have, while very useful, they do not exactly fit the figure of the digital nomad, of the person that can live in Spain by working remotely for companies that are located outside. Finally, Spain has decided to catch up. And uh, in July, the Council of Ministers approved a draft, only a draft bill for the so-called startup law. Uh, this law uh, not only provides tax incentives, uh, incentives for investors and basically facilitates the creation of startup businesses in Spain, but also regulates a new type of residence permit and visa, uh, which is specifically for digital nomads. So first yay. of all, oh, yes, I was like, yay, finally. <laughs> Good. Good. So yeah, it was about time actually. Um, so first of all, I will go through the general objectives of the law and then we will focus on the digital nomad because in the end, of course, we are specialized in immigration. So this is our side. Uh, but in any case, the general objectives of the law are to encourage, of course, the creation of startup projects in Spain, to attract talent and international capital, to stimulate public and private investment in startups, uh, to encourage the relationship between companies and also, while it is very brief, it will also increase the relationships between universities and companies. There is one uh, interesting uh, objective, which is to eliminate the existing gender gaps in, uh, between the, in the Spanish startup system. We want to see how this is developed, but also it's a very interesting, uh, well, commitment in a way, right? Um, and finally, who is considered an international teleworker? Because, of course, the law does not call them digital nomads. Uh, it calls them uh, workers of international character or international teleworker. So anyone who is either employed or self-employed, and in the former case, um, they are working in Spain, but for companies that are located outside of Spain with no representation in Spain. Um, this is the case of the employees, okay? They will be able to work in Spain, but for companies that are located outside. And freelancers have a concession. And basically, um, freelancers, of course, they have a variety of clients. 20% of their clients will be able to come from Spain, but no more than that. So it's a small concession that is made for freelancers, but still 80% of their clients will have to be, um, will have to come from outside. And... Uh, those, uh, now I will go to the, the specific requirements, but there is one general requirement. Generally, highly qualified professionals can apply. That is either people who have a university degree or have a degree from a prestigious business school. The prestige can be accredited in a variety of ways. Or alternatively, if they have at least three years of professional experience. So if someone doesn't have a degree but can accredit three years of professional experience in one specific field, they will still be able to apply. So, um, in addition, the following must be proven. One, the existence of a real and continuous activity for at least one year of the company or group of, of, group of companies that uh, wishes to move a worker to Spain. Uh, documents proving that the employment or professional relationship can be carried out uh, remotely. This is normally inferred from the contract, the functions, a company certificate. And uh, if there is an employment certificate uh, the employee must have maintained uh, an employment with the company that uh, then allows their transfer or not transfer, but the moving of the, employer, uh, of the employee to Spain for at least three months. And finally, uh, in case of a professional relationship, the same, three months of professional relationship with one same, same client. And finally, what are the timings or the possibilities to request this visa? Uh, there will be two possibilities. Either 
uh, the worker can request a one-year visa from outside Spain, that is before their consulate um, of Spain of their place of residence, or a uh, two-year residence permit. The two-year residence permit can be requested either at the end of this year of the visa, or if the person is legally in Spain, for example, if they have a passport that allows them to enter as a tourist, they have 90 days. During those 90 days, um, this is only one of the examples, of course. Or um, there is also another disposition, which is a general disposition of the Spanish law. If someone is residing in Spain for one year, they can convert into a regular residence permit. So what I'm trying to say is that these people, once their remote employment ends, it's not the end of their journey. They can stay working in Spain. Uh, but of course, this is only a draft. And uh, we have very, very brief dispositions now. So we are explaining this uh, only with um, what we have seen in the bill and our assumptions will allow us to answer questions maybe. But Laura now will explain the permits for which you can apply now because this is a draft and may be available as a law in six months, eight months, 12 months. We are not certain. So uh, it's a very attractive option and it will be here. But for now, Laura will explain the options we have uh, currently available. Okay, thank you, Max, for this uh, presentation. And as uh, Maximiliano mentions, uh, this is only a draft. We still don't have this residence permit regulated. So we have to uh, focus now at the options that the, the digital nomads would have now in order to be able to reside and work remotely from Spain. I know that there are a lot of confusion, there is a lot of confusion, because uh, we understand that uh, the Spanish administration already knows that uh, this uh, law will be issued, and we are facing some problems uh, and with the application for the, for the residence permits, but I will show you the options you would have. Uh, we can start with the non-lucrative residence permit, which uh, anyone can um, can obtain uh, in case they can accredit that have sufficient economic means in order to maintain themselves in Spain without carrying out any economic activity and that are covered by health insurance. What happens with this residence permit? Uh, in, in According to the law, uh, anyone who obtains this uh, non-lucrative residence permit should be able to work remotely for a foreign company as an employee of a foreign company because this residence permit does not allow the applicant to uh, carry out any economic activity that uh, requires for them to be registered with the Spanish Social Security. But a uh, digital nomad, uh, a person who is teleworking from Spain uh, remotely for a foreign company should, uh, it is not um, uh, required to be registered with the Spanish Social Security. What happens that uh, we are facing problems with the Spanish consulates because lately they are denying applications uh, for the non-lucrative when they see that the applicant plans to work remotely from Spain or that the applicant is of working age. And we understand that this is, uh, that these um, decisions uh, are due to the fact that uh, a new regulation will be issued for this uh, new community of digital nomads that has uh, been increasing uh, uh, in the late uh, in the last months. Uh, another option, uh, this case for those who plan uh, who plan to work um, as freelancers in Spain, uh, even if it's for foreign clients, uh, would be the business activity residence permit which would allow them to register with the Spanish Social Security as freelancers. Of course, um, a way to reinforce uh, the success of this uh, kind of application would be to have clients also in Spain. But uh, according to our, our experience, we, we have obtained uh, this kind of residence permit for uh, those freelancers uh, who had only clients uh, uh, outside of Spain. And uh, for that, it's, you have to pre pre prepare really well the application because you have to credit that your project will be uh, viable and you have to prepare a business plan with a forecast for the next three years and that you're going to have clients, even if, it's, uh, 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 if they are foreign clients, uh, and, or that you're going to create job uh, positions uh, here in Spain. Uh, and then uh, we can move to the golden visa, the so-called golden visa, which is a privileged residence permit, as it uh, comes with a work permit, actually. Uh, and we have different types of golden visas for Spain. We have the golden visa for investors, 
uh, which comes with a work permit. So here, uh, the, the uh, digital nomad would not have any problem in order to uh, be able to work remotely from Spain. And uh, there are different types of golden visa for investors. Uh, the main, the the main known uh, is the one, uh, the real estate investment, uh, which can be obtained in case uh, you uh, invest at least 500,000 euros in Spanish real estate. And then we can move to the other type of golden visas, um, which are uh, directly uh, addressed to these uh, uh, employees or freelancers. One would be the highly qualified professionals. Uh, in case uh, there is a person who plans to, uh, who is hired as a, for, from, um, by a Spanish company, and, uh, but these uh, highly qualified professionals need to have uh, a specific position. Uh, the Spanish administration wants to see technical positions or manager positions. They need to uh, obtain a salary, a specific salary, which cannot be less than around 50,000 euros per year. And uh, they have to have a university title. Uh, but this is uh, a residence permit uh, thought for those employees employees that will be hired by a Spanish company. And then we have also the golden visa for entrepreneurs. Uh, this would be similar to the business activity residence permit because it would, it would be for those who plan uh, to work as freelancers in Spain or to uh, establish a company in Spain. But in this case, it would be uh, uh, it, the business has to be uh, the business or entrepreneurial activity uh, has to be innovative with a special uh, economic interest for Spain. So it's it's not an, uh, an easy uh, application, but uh, we can uh, confirm that we have obtained different golden visas for entrepreneurs. Uh, and at the end, uh, in this kind of application, it's a subject application, and at the end is the the Spanish administration who will assess each case separately. And also, I just wanted to add that for the non-lucrative residence permit, um, uh, as you know, we have the law, but we also have the criteria from the Spanish administration and from the different consulates. So it may happen that uh, someone uh, who uh, attends a consulate in the wall and, uh, is, and, and obtains this non-lucrative residence permit, even, even if the consulate know, knows that they plan to work remotely from Spain. But then there are some consulates that we already know that uh, they, these uh, teleworkers should not uh, mention that they plan to work remotely from Spain because uh, this is a decision that is still not well prepared by the Spanish administration. And, uh, well, this would be the options. And, of course, uh, also I wanted to add that uh, we have also an office in, in Portugal, so and there are different uh, options uh, for these digital nomads that are currently uh, simpler now or more easy to obtain. Uh, and, of course, we, will, we can inform you about that in, in another e event. And now uh, just uh, we wanted to... To let you know that we can clarify any doubt that uh, you may have regarding this new residence permit or the current residence permits that we that we have uh, now. Wow! Thank you, thank you, Laura. That was amazing, Max. Incredible. Thank you for sh sharing with us the upcoming visa, and we can't wait. To be honest, that looks the requirement you mentioned looks quite simpler. And three months, you know, you just need to show three month history and other requirements as well. And other, the current options, to be honest, Laura, is not that bad, especially the non-lucrative and the business. The first two kind looks quite simpler. So I have a question. Anna and Emma, <clears throat> Emmy also ask questions, but I will start asking you the first question. So the first two type of visas you showed us, what are the require, like what are the duration of those visas, non-lucrative and the business type residence? Yeah, of course. Uh, this uh, general residence permits, which would be uh, the ones that are not the golden visa, the non-lucrative residence permit and the business activity residence permit, they are initially issued uh, for one year. And uh, the application is presented at the Spanish consulate of the place of residence, uh, of the applicant's um, residence. And uh, they are initially issued for one year. And Renewal, renewable for periods of two years, as long as the requirements are, are maintained. And of course, uh, one thing, one important thing here is, as uh, Maximiliano mentioned in the beginning, uh, 
uh, after the first year, um, you are able to modify your non-lucrative residence permit uh, into a work permit as an employee of a Spanish company or, or into a business activity residence permit in case you plan to uh, establish a business in Spain. And you can do it uh, from Spain. You do not need to return to your uh, place of uh, initial place of residence. And uh, for if you modify the non-lucrative into a work permit as an employee, you, in this case, you do not need to overcome the national uh, employment situation. Mm -hmm. Which this means that um, uh, the Spanish administration needs to issue a certificate stating that no one in Spain, no resident or national, uh, was able to uh, obtain this job position. So okay. you do not need to overcome this national employment situation after having resided one year in Spain mm -hmm. on the non-lucrative. So that's amazing. And I will follow. I will ask you a follow-up question. So path to permanent residence or path to citizenship, where these two visas, as Anna asked as well, is it possible? Yeah. Well, you as you wish. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. Well, yeah, definitely it's possible because in the end, um, first of all, permanent residence or long-term residence, as it's called, in Spain is achievable after five years of legal uninterrupted residence. Oh. Any combination of permits, as long as you stay in Spain, um, not as a student, because that's a stay permit. That's the only. But uh, if you're as a resident uh, after five years, and there's one disposition for students for another permit, but as a general rule, it's five mm -hmm. years of legal uninterrupted residence. And citizenship, it's normally 10 years. But uh, those who have uh, passports, for example, for Latin American countries, uh, which I'm sure is the case uh, for many of uh, in our audience, uh, only two years of, uh, yes, and of legal uninterrupted residence. And they can uh, achieve, uh, well, apply for citizenship, for Spanish wow. citizenship. That's and of course, oh, sorry, just to say that this new visa, since it establishes residence, um, using our knowledge of the general law will also serve to that purpose. Wow. So the great news is that all the visa options available, there is a path to permanent residence and the citizenship, just in case if anybody wants to go. That's that's incredible. So I'll go back to Emmy Koshin. She's asking, I'm interested in regulations for EU residents in the Canary Islands when working remotely for a company for another EU company. So if I do the residency, do I have to pay the double taxation and social security in the country of the employer and again in the Spain? So what I understood that she is a resident in Spain and she's working for an Estonian company, let's say. But, so her employer is in the European Union. So do she have to pay double taxation? I know you are not a tax person, but do you know the sure. answer to that? I can answer very superficially because it's true that we are only well, we are immigration lawyers. We have yeah. a tax department, so anyone who contacts us. Mm -hmm. uh, by the way, th then we will at the, in the end we will talk about the advantage to, to anyone who contacts us. But uh, there is definitely tax advice that we can give as a firm. But mm -hmm. in any case, one becomes a tax resident in Spain after residing in the country for 183 uh, days. Mm -hmm. That's of the natural year from January to December, mm -hmm. and in that case, they pay taxes. And for their worldwide income, but uh, countries with, which have a double taxation agreement with Spain and, of course, countries of the EU uh, prevent that. So the moment in which you become a tax resident in Spain, you would only ta pay taxes in Spain. Yay, that's, that's incredible. So I'll go forward quickly to the another question. Anna asked, what is the sufficient funds requirement for a non-lucrative visa? Sure. Okay. <clears throat> So, uh, yeah, of course, in order to apply for the non-lucrative residence permit, you have to accredit, well, the main applicant have to read that they have uh, at least 2,259.6 um, uh, euros per month. Mm -hmm. uh, this is an index, a uh, Spanish index. Um, or uh, at least more around 27,200 euros for the whole year. And this is for the main applicant. For each accompanying family member, the amount would be uh, at least 560 euros per month or uh, at least uh, almost 7,000 euros per mm -hmm. year for each family member. Yeah, that's incredible. So Andrew asked this exactly the same question. So Andrew, you qualify, you have a 2,500, you qualify for the non-lucrative visa, I, I assume. It's a 2,200 euros requirement, as Laura said. Is that correct, right, Laura? 2,200, a monthly, yes. Yeah. 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 So that's perfect. Andrew, you qualify. Talk to them. So guys, one thing I want to share with you while asking the questions, 
any service you hire Lexity and our friends there, you get 5% off on any service or any consultation. Mostly they offer free consultation. But if you want to know more, if you want to apply, you need tax advisors, you need visa consultation with Laura and Max directly. Any service you buy, they will help you and you get 5% off their published price. This is exclusive for our webinar and Digital Nomad Nation group. Mention them DNN code, Digital Nomad Nation DNN, or you coming from this webinar. So I'll go back to the questions. Rodrigo is asking, how does it work if I have a permanent European residence? Residencia de larga duración. So in another EU member state and would like to transfer it to Spain, how much money would I need to in savings and for how long it will be issued? Sure. Well, first of all, we have to determine one little thing. One thing is the long-term residence and that's uh, the name or the long-term EU because the long-term EU allows you to transfer very easily between uh, EU countries. So, for example, if you have a long-term EU residence for Germany, um, you would need to show, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's 150% of yeah. the EU, uh, uh, but that's basically uh, approximately 10,000 or 11,000 uh, per year. But the thing is that if it's a regular long-term residence, that only means that you can um, apply for the residence permit for Spain from the country in which you live. Meaning, okay. for example, if you have a long-term residence uh, in Germany, a long, regular long-term residence, you can apply from Germany for a Spanish residence permit. But there's no uh, additional advantage. Oh, wow. This is, this is incredible. So guys, we are going towards the end. So I will again mention that check out Lexity website, lexity.com, and connect with them. That's the link here, lexity.com. There's an email and reach them out as the email. There's no cost. You can reach her out. And if you decide to buy any service, you get 5% off, mention them. And um, if you want to know, again, I will uh, quickly share my screen. And this time I would like to know if I, you can hear me quickly. I think you can hear me. So if you, you can check out visadb.io, all the services, all the visas around the world. We have 107 visas for anyone, including Spain. And um, also you can hire Lexity through visadb. We have 176 immigration experts from 60 countries. So you can go ahead, you can move to Thailand, Bali, Spain, or anywhere, register companies in anywhere you want. And everything, costing, everything is mentioned there. It's very transparent and it's free for you, both of things, the database and the experts database. Again, I will quickly open Lexity website as well because I love their website design. So check out, this is their website. They are English speaking, as you have already seen, incredible English speaking lawyers. Uh, book a call, get 5% off. So with that, guys, I will go back and uh, I really want to thank you for all the people who joined today. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you for coming out. Laura and Max, that was amazing, informative. We recorded it. We sent it to the members who was not able to join this webinar. So really grateful for this information and we will organize something for Portugal in within two weeks or so. So have a great day. Again, I want to thank you and show my gratitude on the behalf of my community. Thank you for coming today and sharing this incredible knowledge with our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you Danish, Danish, for thank this you. opportunity. And thank you all for uh, your participation. And um, of course, if you have any further questions or whatever you need, you, you can contact us. Yes, we will make uh, uh, Spain a digital nomad. It is already a hub. People are using tourist visas, but now we will offer them residence visas. So we are on a mission. So thank you guys. Have a good day and everybody else. Wonderful day. Bye. 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 Thank you, Danish. Take care. Thank you. Bye. -bye.